as it goes. As we watch the inevitable destruction of the economy really pick up pace, it is dawning on people now what's going on, to a point. It may be pubs leading the way in the news and on social media, and with the reach they have, it can only help to be shouting it from the rooftops. But all business premises are going to be affected, and homes, schools, supermarkets, and the list goes on, covered the other day in pubs, inns and taverns. But what of the mental impact it's having on people? The anguish being caused directly to the people shutting up shop and losing their livelihood, and to the folk who have to watch it happen, feeling helpless, angry and dismayed at what is unfolding. And rightly so. It's a travesty, and not one that can be recovered from lightly. Once they are gone, they are gone. Seeing and hearing constantly about terrible things happening, things that are coming, and nothing to look forward to can have a devastating impact on someone, child and adult alike. That by itself can be debilitating to some, even if we did see it coming. They made it clear where it was going, but hoodwinked a lot of folk into thinking they would never let it get to this, while the rest saw the obvious switch, meaning it would actually lead to this. Remember when they introduced furlough, billions on it, for people to sit nicely at home and play the game, and some of us said they were setting us up, and there would be a huge cost to it, not just in money. Well now this is the next level of the same game. It was always a trap, and some just jumped right into it. Many did, millions in fact. And it was enough to lead us to here, where there are still billions of pounds available to help you, but they don't want to. They actually want the destruction, because no sane, logical human being would continue down this route, unless helping wasn't on the cards. Once you understand that you're actively trying to hinder and destroy, it makes a lot more sense when you look around, to what you see here. Because to many, it doesn't make sense, as they are still thinking along the lines that it should, which can also lead to getting a bit stuck, mentally. Toiling over the reasonable approach to end up becoming bewildered and exasperated at the lack of reason and logic. And there one stays, in a state of mild shock and never quite moving forward to the next stage, anger. Plenty are there already, don't get me wrong, but they are stuck too, as the anger can't be resolved and therefore festers and grows, part of what they are counting on, but isn't as straightforward as you might think. The consensus is, they will push for civil unrest, impose martial law, and then the implementation of the digital prison is rolled out in full, which I don't argue with, but that only works if the anger they have created is not directed at them. It needs to be people against people fighting each other for a place in the new regime. Division and hatred are used as weapons as much as any violence or artillery, but they are not as obvious, so many don't even notice. A major red flag should have been at the beginning of this debacle, when they announced that they had a nudge unit of behavioural scientists drawing up plans to convince, manipulate, coerce and brainwash people into complying, but making it seem like their decision. I knew then that they would use that against people when the time came, and indeed they did. Now, when it comes to liability, very quickly becoming a taboo word, they very quickly positioned themselves away from responsibility, showing really why those coercive methods were used. But they still sound quite cold and detached when named as such. Let's call it what it really is. Fear tactics. Also dubbed Project Fear. I started using this name early on. As others did, it seems. Many of us saw it recognised it and even tried to warn others. But fear can be paralysing, to body and mind, and not necessarily both at the same time. Your body can still be going through the motions, yet your mind is not quite taking part, instead just in stasis somewhere in mind. And that is what they created and used to get people on board with their frenzied relentless pursuit of medical dominion over the population, a power that no person or corporation should have over the masses ever. But it really does seem as though they expected everyone to be fooled, and to roll over and turn into scared, headless chickens, waiting for the next sign to know what to do. My previous piece, Mass Psychosis or Runaround, covered this from the angle of people who did. But what of now, where we are today, no longer in the grip of a manufactured pandemic crisis? We have lurched onto a climate and energy crisis, where guess what? Simply money and restrictions can yet again save the day. Colour me shocked. 
Not only are we witnessing what appears to be the biggest money laundering operation in plain sight, everyone is being taken down with it. Well, everyone at a certain level of society anyway. And whether they thought we would be too stupid to see it, or that everyone would just get on board with their sinister, heartless, illogical and deviant plans, I'm not sure. Given the stresses they have presented to people to now have as a daily routine, I suspect many people are not falling in line or just going along with the new rules set before them. Enough are though, and that is where it gets interesting. Because I've speculated on there being a split society in my piece, there was always going to be two. And it seems a split is occurring, not just with the divides of old, class, politics, money, race, employment, location, but with new added ones for foreign politics, personal medical history, illnesses. It's a systematic sensory overload, and one that many aren't meant to make it through mentally, physically, emotionally, or financially. Because if they can't get to you physically, they will try to get to you mentally, through real or virtual threats, and it's knock-on effect. It suits their purpose for us to speculate. And although I might not like it, even by writing about it, I am helping in a small way to contribute to their project fear, by highlighting and detailing it. But I do it in the hope that by explaining it, and breaking it down into a logical format, that others may be able to see through the illusion that they have us all over a barrel, because at this stage, that is only how it seems. We may not know where this goes, or how this ends, but being afraid of the unknown shouldn't make us accept something that is known. Knowing when to walk away is important, both in body and mind. Keep your wits about you, stay sharp, and try and keep your head above water. Seems like a flood is coming.